Hey everybody, what's going on? <clears throat> good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, I'm really excited. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good uh, good everything. Good, oh, adobo. Oh my goodness. Um, let's get it cracking. I am very excited to... I just woke up at 9.45. I'm very excited to dive into some stuff here. <clears throat> We're going to be here until I finish the Archon quest. Fairly sure. Oh, hello. Bon matin. Chechia. Good evening. Yes, of course. Good evening to you. Hello, Kira. Ra. Valeria. Takudo. Just a cat. Nana. Flux. Paul. Erica. Tuki. Gazin. Kazin. Speck. Ooh, Singapore. Hello, Singapore. <laughs> All right. So as we left off, hang on, I gotta turn up my gain here. Thanks, Ephraim. Hola, Chile. Sorry, but no one can freely enter or exit the Opera House at the moment. If you wish to leave, you must register your identity with us first. Uh, no, we're not leaving. We're representing Linny and Lynette as attorneys, so we're investigating the case. Were you always guarding this entrance? Yes. After the Chief Justice gave the order, everyone coming in or out must undergo a strict inspection. So, the missing girl couldn't have left from here. At least, not from that point on. What about during the show, though? I doubt there was much opportunity then, either. How can you be so sure, hmm? Well, because I was in charge of security near the entrance at that time, I couldn't see Linny's performance from here, which was quite a shame. Just my luck. But still, I did not abandon my post. And I stayed put no matter how loud the applause was. If someone had so much as even approached the door, I would have noticed it, let alone if they had tried to leave. We Melazines are good at that sort of thing, you know. So, <laughs> it's safe to say the girl couldn't have left through here. Alright, thank you for your help. This will be useful info. No one left the Opera House during the magic show, and after the incident happened, only those who had their identities cleared by the guards could leave. Right. We checked everything of note here at the performance venue. Hmm. My mom wonders how Lenny's discussion with the guards is going. Let's go see, shall we? Ooh, things are getting interesting, huh? We're about to see how ma- That's a really Understood. weird comment then by her. I will be going with you. Just so you're aware, I will be monitoring your actions and making notes as necessary. Very good. Thanks for being so agreeable. I'd pull a rose out of my hat as a gift for you if I could. You may spare the pleasantries. I'm just doing my job. <laughs> You've arrived. Uh, who's this? Me? <laughs> I'm Spina de Rosula's guardian angel. If you've got a problem, I've got the firepower. That's a really weird entrance. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. I got oh, a good, little okay. carried away That's there. That's very charming. Call me Navia. I'm a partner of theirs and will be helping investigate this whole situation. Could you imagine what a weird entrance? These are my companions. Would you mind if they join as well? Hmm? Fine by me. Oh, new helpers? I would be most grateful. Honestly, well, I think Linny let's just is say we're tagging guilty. Along. It's not every day you get to see the secrets behind magic performed on such a large scale. Chat, hold on. I gotta get more coffee. One second. I for, I... One second.
<laughs> I appreciate your kind interest. Come with me. We'll be heading below stage. Below stage. You know what's funny? Uh, huh? Below stage. Below stage? <clears throat> yeah, there's a yes, whole. If there's a, a trap world system. Of secrets is hidden beneath yeah. this magic box. Right. Prepared specifically for this switcheroo trick. I don't know if you know this, but below stage, obviously, that's where all the like mechanics are. That's where you see the hydraulics for the pit. That's where, um, if there's a trap door on stage, like I had to make an entrance and a trap door when I was in, in Limoges and in France in general. And what would happen is. <clears throat> you go under the under the stage and then they they have a whole hydraulic team and then this thing just rose up I've never been in one before it was so cool <clears throat> but you just sit there and you come up it's such a cool thing but underneath the stage is a really interesting also usually there's gonna be like a, a crossway uh, to get to the stage left and stage right it's really fun but before I reveal everything you should have a look first hello Indonesia Notice anything strange here yeah, Gumi, I'm really sorry to hear that. I'm not trying to be dramatic. Remembering the details of a trick will help you understand the methods used to perform it more easily. Sure is spooky. Weren't there balloons and other decorations here? Yes, there were. Where did all that go? Ah, good eye. That said, you're still far from discovering the answer. Oh, wow, okay. So he's being a little annoying. The back of the door isn't the same. Uh, the back? You mean the inside of the door? What's different about it? Paimon didn't notice anything. <sighs> Hello, Happy. <laughs> Very good indeed. I thought you might not be able to catch that, given that you were sitting in the first row. The back of this door was patterned. Those patterns are now gone, replaced by a smooth wooden board. I find it kind of odd that... So, if you put Linnea... two and two together, what do you get? I find it kind of odd that he's literally under an investigation and he's, like, giving us a magic trick lesson. It's very strange. Wait, does that mean there's another box inside this one? <laughs> exactly. All right, let's go. I'll tell you how it works as we Hi, head Asteria. down. So there was a passageway under the magic box! Hmm, and this passage linked the two boxes together. <laughs> I knew you'd figure out most of it as soon as you saw this place. He definitely likes his job. The two magic boxes are positioned right above the two entrances of the tunnel. See this flatbed trolley? The box with the lucky audience member in it would be shuttled over to the other side using the trolley. This trolley can raise and lower and even rotate, ensuring that the box will face in the right direction. Right. I see. Hello, Christy. So that's What's the up, purpose club? of the box inside another box. Precisely. The inner box would descend after the audience member was put inside and be moved along the trolley. All while the outer box would remain on stage as if nothing had ever changed. So that's how you did it! Yes. Once the box was lowered, the trolley would store some energy through this device here, with which it would complete the rest of the steps. The audience member would only be able to feel some slight movements in the dark, and by the time she walked out, she would already be back on stage. Mm -hmm. Well, then what about your side of the trick? Right! You were talking that whole time, and you even came out for a moment near the end! Ah, yes. A phonograph operated by Lynette was used to achieve that effect. It was all part of the show, right? My assistant and I had already scripted our conversation beforehand. When the countdown began, I had already gone to the opposite box via a tunnel using that ladder. Mm -hmm. And what about Lynette? Where was she? I was in the mezzanine space in the back of the box. Oh, interesting! That's how we were able to coordinate Lenny's lines with the assistant. And, by the way, I was the one who walked out of the box at the end. I mean, we are twins. All it takes is a change of clothes, and no one can no, tell who's No, I know, I know, he has who. to explain the trick, I know, but... And that's my favorite part of this trick. It's just his, his Only attitude. Only Lynette and I can perform it. So that's how it all worked! Wow, 
Every detail you revealed was more amazing than the last! I can tell you put a lot of thought into this. Lynette would briefly walk out of the box and then go back in, jumping into the tunnel and escaping before the box on the trolley could finish ascending. Right. And then I walk out of the other box in the audience area, and the trick would be complete. The operative word here being would. But as you saw, Cal was in the box, not our audience member. She, on the other hand, mysteriously vanished. Mm -hmm. We really don't know how that happened. I take it you're not a super fond of Lenny? If not Lenny? for that interlude, Lining? this no, would have been not really. an astonishing trick. I probably never would have figured out how you pulled it off. And yet, to think that someone was able to use this magic trick to commit a crime. Could we have a look around? I think we can come up with some more leads. This is the scene of the crime. So Linny and Lynette are not permitted to stay here. Right. I'll escort them back up. Yes, of course. No need to be so strict now. I won't disappear into thin air. Like, know. that's kind of... <laughs> Thanks, everyone. We're counting on you. I really dislike Linny as a character. Linny gave a detailed account about how a trick was supposed to work by using a box instead of a box. The idea was for the box containing the audience member to be transported across via a tunnel underneath and Linny himself would also use the tunnel to get to the other side. Right. The magic box on stage has an additional layer to it in its rear, in which Lena and Lenny's clothes remained hidden. I actually love Farina. Farina, I think right now, Nuvala and Farina are my favorite two characters that I've met. I mean, people don't know the magic box at the center of the audience stands has two layers. The magic box at the center of the audience stands has two layers, and beneath it, an entrance to the underground tunnel. This should be the control device for the trolley. Okay. All right, you push that button, I'm sure. Huh. What's this? A hook. Looks like a hook tied to the end of a rope. Huh? There's all kinds of odds and ends here. Now, Lenny didn't mention this earlier. Perhaps it was a prop for a different trick. But why would it have been left here? Whatever it is, let's make a note of it first. I like the the dichotomy between Nuvolet and Furina. Furina. Uh oh, water. Oh, from the uh. uh the floor is <clears throat> wet. Please be careful not to slip. Speaking of which, why? Would there be water here? Oh, well, maybe it was for the for a trick? Oh, Hyman knows! It's one of those tricks where you pour water into a jug and then flip the jug over only for the water to disappear? And here's a broken vase! Huh. Did the trolley knock it down while moving? No, there must have been... There must that have been some... Be. Uh, the trolley moves along tracks from right. start to finish. Must have it been couldn't a, have hit the conflict. vase at this distance. Let's note this down too and think about it later. Yeah, but Fossalor is French, isn't it? That's the correct pronunciation. Fudina, yes, of course, hysteria. Fudina, because the U. Mm. There are many pieces of broken flower vase on the side of the tunnel. All the water within the bend is boiled, judging from the distances of it. Fudina. These are the clothes that the lady chosen from the audience was wearing, right? Oh! Her clothes are here, <gasps> but she's nowhere to be found. Uh, Lydia didn't mention the guest having a wardrobe change. Right. And do you really need to do that if you're kidnapping them? Ugh. This is so confusing. <laughs> Confused I eyes. I not anymore. <laughs> well, then take off the thing. <clears throat> yeah, it is too bad that Navi is Geo. Geo wears class. The clothes... Clothes ball into house that you lay you in the safe room's home. Mm -hmm. Mm 
God, I really love the aesthetic of Fontaine. What kinds of props and costumes are how how does it Yep, sounds about right. Marco will lose no opportunity to slander Geo. I meant what I said. It seems someone could fit through here. Oh. Huh. Could this have been the suspect's escape route? Hmm, alone, perhaps. But if they had to pull another person with them, this space would be too narrow. But there are no other ways in or out of here. Well, other than those that go through the magic boxes, and Linny and Lynette were in the two magic boxes. The tunnel vent looks like it could allow for one person passage. Barely believing it, believing along with the missing lady seems unrealistic. Yeah. Seems we're just about done investigating down here. Yes, let's head back up. the state of the crime scene. Let's find a place to sort out our findings once Malus returns. Seems to me that there are several things that don't add up here. Apologies for the wait, demoiselle. So, what did the guards say? Did the criminal escape through the vent? They believe the odds of that are very low, since the vent leads to the Opera House's basement. The guards have checked the area carefully. No one left through the basement during the performance or after the incident, and no one was found hiding there. So the tunnels become like a secret chamber then! You know, like the kind you usually see in novels! It would seem so. Hmm. Plot begins. Halsey's disappearance and Cowell's death are both quite inexplicable. No wonder Farina was so confident in her accusation. All the current evidence points toward Linny and Lynette. In other words, the charges are very likely to be upheld unless we make some considerable progress. Charges and then trial. So if the charges are upheld, they'll announce a sentence? That's right. This is how a trial goes in the Opera House. During the proceedings, the Chief Justice and the Oratrice will hear statements from both sides. The Oratrice will too? That's right. This is how indemnidium is produced. Right, the thing. The statements from both sides, the defenses from attorneys, witness testimonies, and even the audience's emotions will all be projected on the oratrice. To put it simply, it's as if the oratrice has its own will and is a judge in its own right. This also precludes any kind of favoritism on the part of the Chief Justice. And not that this has ever happened anyway. Fascinating. Once both sides have finished speaking, the Chief Justice will make his final decision. This, too, will be used by the Oratrice as a reference. Hey, let's not... Then, finally, let's not the talk about, will uh, be consulted by officials. The result it returns no, is the will please, of justice absolutely itself. zero conversation about leaks. Please. Please. Huh? So that machine is the one that actually decides? I'm on button of a lead called the shots. In practice, there is very little difference. Both have always come to the same judgment. Which is why people have great faith in the Chief Justice. Ah, yes, the guards also asked me to convey that none of us will be allowed to leave this place before the trial. Huh? Why? Because we've chosen to act as the twins' proxies. That makes us persons related to the case. Mm -hmm. <sighs> They're concerned that we might be colluding with outside parties. 
or that we might find outside help to disrupt the case. And even if that were not so, it could prove problematic if we happen to spread key information about the case ahead of time. I'm ready to break out at any time. Of course. I just hope you don't mind the lack of options. I'm afraid that catering to all tastes is not in the cards, nor is any guarantee of balanced nutrition. Well, now's not the time to be picky, right? In that <clears> case, <throat> let's just sort out our findings together here. Pity. I was hoping to take you to try some of Fontaine's famous desserts, too. I mean, what better way to properly think through our findings than over some tea and sweets? Breaking out suddenly doesn't seem like such a bad idea after all. Paimon! Just kidding! Just kidding! Paimon will still do her best, even if there are no snacks. Hmm? What do you mean, no snacks? Of course we'll have snacks. If we cannot buy some, then we'll simply make some. Huh? Huh? Here? But how? Understood, demoiselle. Everyone, please come with me. How are they gonna make? How are they gonna make snacks? Wait, you're carrying a portable stove with you? Yes, I must be prepared to meet the demoiselle's baking needs whenever <coughs> the fancy strikes her. God. I have eggs, sugar, and almonds at the ready. Huh? <laughs> Good work, you two. Then I'll get to it. Please sit tight for a moment. You'll get to taste my awesome snacks soon enough. These three are quite the interesting group. It must be a Spina de Rizula thing. It's so weird. Fresh macaron. Look at these fucking. They're huge. Jesus, they look like they look like steamed pork buns. That's not what a macaroon looks like. They're fucking massive. Ooh, I bet you that's... Is this Rose, you think? I was applauding. I was applauding. And I was giving encouraging smiles. Uh, that's not quite what Paimon meant, but okay. Uh, this looks like a game. mix. Aren't you worried mm. about getting your fancy dress dirty, beating egg whites, and baking like this? Mixing. Mixing macaroon flavors. That's very interesting. That's probably chocolate. Is that peach, you think, maybe? This looks like it's probably green tea. This looks like a mixture of raspberry and... God, I fucking love macaroons. <laughs> well, I don't think it's carved in stone anywhere that fancy ladies can only read books, sip tea, ride horses, and play the piano. I just really enjoy making snacks. Don't underestimate beating egg weights, by the way. It's a real arm workout. You also need to beat them to just the right consistency, or your macarons will crack. Macaron! Anyway, give these a try, fresh out of the oven. There's three for each of us. Only three? Bro, they're huge. Well, eating too many sweet treats might send all that sugar to your head. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to think clearly about the case on a sugar rush, would you? Tea is ready to be served as well. This is Demoiselle's favorite. Strong black tea with a floral fragrance that clears mm. the mind and lifts the spirit. Thank you. Why don't you take a break as well? No need for concern. I'm merely doing as I should. Macaron. <laughs> Hi, All right, then. <clears throat> Down to business. As Paimon mentioned previously, the tunnel seems to be something of a secret chamber. However, we can assume that Linny and Lynette were not alone within it. Some criminal also occupied its sealed confines. Right. The magician twins could have committed the crimes, of course. But they lack any logical motive. Exactly! Why would they do such a thing right when everyone was watching? So apart from the twins, we're left with two other people. We're left with two other people. The missing girl and the deceased. The flower face and the thud we heard during the performance could indicate some altercation between Halsey and the criminal in the tunnel. Resulting in the shattering of the vase, the discarding of her clothes, and her abduction. I really wonder who... Perhaps hmm. the criminal thought that since she was chosen from the crowd, she would be too easy to identify if she was still wearing the same clothes. Paimon thinks that makes sense, but the real trouble is... 
Yeah, there's no evidence that this third person even exists. <sighs> True. None of the clues we found thus far support the existence of this third person. So I'm I really hope that whoever this like serial killer is is like a very complex and interesting character. Or there's some like weird twist where like Farina needs young women in order to fuel the I don't know, but like I hope that it's not like, oh it's the abyss order. Oh no. That's my but hope. But the only people left to consider are both technically victims. Whether it's the missing girl. Halsey, or poor Cowl. Huh. Could Halsey have secretly made modifications to the magic props in order to murder Cowl before making her escape? But she had no way of knowing how the magic trick even worked. Uh, that's right. And even if she had tampered with the setup, she would need to understand the entire trick to pull it off. Nor does she have any motive. The guard said that she has never had any dealings with the Magic Troops members. She would have also had to know that search? that number generator only worked for that seat. <clears throat> that seems really complicated. Things, this is turning into an impossible case. Your macarons You're are welcome. amazing though, Navia. They smell great! They're nice and crisp and super sweet! <laughs> they are my specialty after all. Five! I see you've already had five of them. Just gonna get explosive <laughs> diarrhea. What? Five? Oh, that can't be right. Why not only count three? Honest! How she even digest? Please don't worry about it. At my age, a few less sweets might actually be a good thing. Uh, no, no. Being greedy is one thing, but Paimon knows how to count. Besides, Paimon knows that if she ate too many, then others... Have it's fine if you ate them. You ate them. Oh, it's it's fine. Everyone knows how much you love eating. Wait, even you don't believe Paimon? Uh, how could you? If Paimon ate those two extra macarons, then may they turn into stone in her stomach. <laughs> All right, we get it. Well, I suppose one of us might have gotten too engrossed in our chat and eaten them by mistake. No big deal. Malus, set up the stove again, if you would. Huh? Huh? What are you doing? Making sure everyone gets three macarons, of course. Oh, there's really no need to do that. Exactly. We don't want to trouble you. As you wish, demoiselle. Damn, how many and eggs I is Silver egg carrying? Weirdo? <laughs> well, this really is your hobby, huh? Her voice is much better. It's much more tame well, than Inazuma. Well, that's it for snack time. I'm going to have another look around the area. I don't know what we're looking for yet, but we've still got some time. As attorneys, I suggest the two of you think the case over again. Just rip off that geo vision. <laughs> it would vision. be awkward if you got all tongue-tied on stage during the trial. Imagine waking up. All right, thanks for your help. Imagine waking up snack. to your vision powers and looking over and you see a geo thing and you're just like. <laughs> it was nothing. A small task Terrible. for the Spina di Rosula. Silver, Malus, it's time to go. Like, I, pr I wouldn't even I'll use it. I'll be back it. if I find anything new. Like, Geo. God. God. Not Geo. Oh, God. I would just... All right, it's time to put our heads together. We've got to get our defense ready for the trial. Oh. 8 a.m. Jeune demoiselle. I saw a French guy um, uploaded a video of every French word and in, in um, well, the following day. Uh, of uh, every French possible word. I thought about doing it, but I am not French, so that would have been silly. But if they ever go to Italy, I'll be on that shit. Spaghetti. That's how you pronounce a spaghetti. <clears throat> Oratrice mécanique d'analyse cardinal. Hmm. 
I do have some thoughts, but let's take things step by step. Good plan. Impossible things don't just happen. We'll get to the truth one way or another. Uh, just relax. Even if everyone else suspects Lenny and Lynette, at least we will be supporting them from the stands. That's useless. <laughs> Besides, <laughs> I doubt Farina understands any more about what happens than we do. Well, of course, but she <laughs> just wants a conflict. Thanks, Navia. Well, we'll be going then. Best of luck to you. This is a new flavor of Olipop. Imagine if I was affiliated with them. I'm not, but uh, I could sign up to be an affiliate. Uh, Olipop, this is ginger ale. It's okay. It tastes like real ginger, though. Maybe I should set up an affiliate link with Olipop. I drink it so freaking oh, much. Finally, you're back. Well, how did your investigation go? To be honest, you might be disappointed. No, no. Yeah, we're you're guilty as fuck. We're grateful that you were willing to help. Just kidding. Well, now, don't you all look disappointed? Don't tell me that your investigation came up empty-handed. That was to be expected, of course. The guilty can never produce proof of their innocence. But don't let that stop you. I shall be terribly disappointed should you, my most anticipated foe, concede so easily. Just you wait then. Since both parties are present, I declare that the trial regarding the magic show incident is now in session. Firstly, Ooh. in order for the audience to understand the causes and results of the incident, could we please have Mr. Linney explain the trick? Yes, of course. I will explain while Lynette demonstrates nice on stage. There. All the necessary items have been prepared. Thank you, Mr. Linney. In that case, I take your statement to be that you ran to and remained hidden within the magic box in the audience stands once the trick began, and thus could not have committed the crime. Is this correct? Beautiful. Yes, that's <clears throat> correct, Your Honor. Ooh, oboe. In that case, I call upon the prosecution. Lady do you wish to refute his statement in any, any way? way? Why, of course I do. Allow me to take the first shot and break this case wide open. Mr. Lenny is clearly lying. That's the there first shot. There is no way you could have been in the box the whole time if you were to abduct Halsey and murder Cowell. In fact, I'd say you were hardly in that tunnel at all. That is simply your hypothesis based on the presumption that I'm guilty. Oh, is that so? And if I may ask, what did you hear while you were inside your box? The roaring countdown of the crowd, of course. That's how I kept track of the time and built anticipation for the finale. And you didn't hear anything I like the organ. All? Big block nothing chords. that might <clears throat> leave an impression of any kind? No, nothing. I see. But when the count reached 30 seconds or so, there was a thud. One so loud that I believe practically everyone heard it. Huh? Hey, hang on. Something's not right here. How could Liddy not know about that sound? Yeah, I'm sure he could have heard a noise that loud from inside the box. I was right by the box, and I definitely heard the thud. Look at those scales. Could those mean... They probably represent the Oratrice's stance on the trial. <laughs> well then, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to use the words of the magician himself. You never know what can happen in the blink of an eye. Indeed, it seems his alibi can also collapse in the blink of an eye. <laughs> of course, I have armed myself to do far more than smash your alibi. Confidence cannot go unfounded, and my foundations are rock solid. Tell me, aren't you and Lynette actually from the House of the Heart? 
They're... Fatui? Well, there's the Fatui theme. And no also, what? They did something like this. So the serial disappearances were the Fatui's doing. Now it all makes sense. Oh my god, is... Got a feeling that is Adla Kino their mother? Wasn't just an accident. <gasps> That's irrelevant. Our identities have nothing to do with what happened. Indeed. Then perhaps you could tell us everything that happened during that one minute. Your first priority is to prove yourself innocent after all. I'm sure there is little that needs to be kept secret now. Unless your script already has holes in it. <sighs> the Outlander is speechless. My, oh my, don't they look flabbergasted. Huh? <laughs> oh, she's just now happy. comes the infighting in Discord, I suppose. This was almost too easy. <sighs> Good thing I made all those preparations. Seems the all-nighter I pulled last night is really paying off. <clears throat> hey, Linny! Why didn't you tell us this before? Linny and Lynette are Fatui. Order! Order! Mr. Linny, allow me to re-establish the facts. Lady Farina has raised two points. First, when the thud was heard in the Opera House, you were neither in the box nor the tunnel. Second, you and Ms. Lynette are both members of the House of the Hearth. Are these claims true? <sighs> hmm. There's no doubt about a magician's ability to con others, given how Linny has concealed his identity. This could all have been set up beforehand. Plus, Child is here in Fontaine, along with other house operatives. There must be some scheme at work here. <sighs> I've been a victim of such schemes before, and now... Please answer my question, Mr. Linny. I'm sorry. Yes, they're true, Your Honor. I knew it! Well, that's it. We might as well move on to the sentencing already. What should we do now? <sighs> Permission to speak, Your Honor. Granted. My client has withheld some key information. My defense cannot proceed. In that case, what is your request? I request a brief adjournment. There are some things... There are things that must be discussed. Is that really necessary? They're already as good as guilty. The defendant deceived their own attorneys. What is there left to discuss? Order! Order, I say! Your request is reasonable, and we shall adjourn. This trial will reconvene in one hour. <laughs> so you would stick to Mr. Lenny's defense even after knowing what you do now? You certainly have more professionalism than I thought. In that case, my dear audience, Let's allow the joy of victory to steep for a little while longer. <laughs> well, this is awkward. I didn't think the Hydro Archon would dig all that up. I'm sorry, Traveler and Paimon. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Ugh. Paimon just knew where to start. We trusted you two. Oh, this is the theme from the Tavat story trailer. Wow, so this whole time. Cool. I know you're angry, and reasonably so, but please, let me explain. I know you've clashed with the Vatui several times before. I wouldn't be surprised if just hearing the word is enough to make you upset. But our organization is very, very large, and the Harbingers have very different personalities and goals. Right now, we want to save people, as many as we can. That's right. 
I'm sure we're on the same page when it comes to this nation and the disaster that its people might face. I knew if it weren't for our respective identities, we could become good friends. That's why I didn't wish to flat out lie to you, but chose to hide some details instead. The truth is very important, but being completely transparent about everything would see us spending more effort than we need to. But how can we know this isn't all just another lie? Right. So, you be the judge. Heck, if I were you, I fear that I'd even struggle to trust me at this point. You met a Fatus who works as a magician, a trickster by trade. All by coincidence, too. A Fatus. But still, I'm asking you to trust me. I am no criminal. At least, not in this case. Sorry. Please forgive us. Well, you both say that, but... Explain the other issue first. Where do you actually go while the trick was being performed? Right. Let's hear your answer first, and no lies now! Of course. I'll answer any question you ask. I just asked one. We've been trying to find out how the Oratrice operates. We want to know why it has a consciousness. Why can it deliver sentences accurately? During our investigations, we learned that the machine's core is beneath it. From that moment on, Lynette and I have been designing this box swap trick with the objective of getting close to the core. Is that why you needed a whole minute? That's right. In truth, the audience would take about 75 seconds to count down from 60, while I would only need 15 to get to the opposite box. So, after jumping into the tunnel, I accessed the Opera House basement via the vent, and went to investigate the room in which the core is stored. That air vent was created during the construction of the tunnel specifically to execute this step. And what did you find? Well, <clears throat> nothing. As soon as I reached that room and was about to investigate, I heard someone's voice. Which should have been impossible, of course. I was quite certain that I was the only one in the room. That voice seemed to recognize me and tried to speak to me. I chose to err on the side of caution and retreated the way I came. On the way back, I saw the broken vase and the clothes on the ground, but the countdown was almost finished, so there wasn't time to give it any thought. After that, the homicide occurred just as you saw. Well, that explains why you didn't hear the thud. But why do you want to understand how the Oratrice operates? Because of that prophecy I told you about, of course. We must know all we can about this nation's secrets in order to deal with that prophesized crisis. <clears throat> That's the only way we can save everyone. With the water overflowing. So, there you have it. The whole truth. Uh, I swear, uh, I didn't hide anything from you this time. It was never my wish to proceed under this cloud of mistrust either. But, like I said earlier, you can be the judge. If you want to leave because you don't trust the Fatui, there's nothing I can do to stop you. Well, Traveler, you decide. Paima will follow your lead however you choose. I believe in the facts. I will defend you from these charges. I believe that judgment will be dispensed as it should. Okay, thank you. Thanks for giving us a chance. The current problem is that the scales are tipped pretty badly against you two. If we want to refute the Hydro Archon's accusations, we're gonna need a seriously watertight defense. Actually, we already have the key evidence we need. Huh? The adjournment's almost over. Let's go back. Hmm. Oh, Paimon thinks she gets what you mean. That's the same voice that said, Vasher, Vasher, Oxen, Oxen. Vasher's cow, actually. Cow? Both parties have returned to their positions. Let us continue the trial. When last we left off, Mr. Linney acknowledged the new evidence presented by Lady Farina as fact. Therefore, Lady Farina may continue stating her reconstruction of the events. Ugh, that took long enough. Now then, 
If everyone would lend me their attention. At this stage, let's revisit that scene from Linny's perspective. Oh. Ooh, mini game. Okay. Wow, fun. You find a refute all incorrect content. You can it. Cool. <gasps> cool. As the countdown began, he entered the tunnel. When the flatbed trolley passed, he opened the box and got into an altercation with Halsey, which caused the loud thud. He did not realize that this sound could be heard by everyone in the opera house, which is why he claimed earlier that he could not hear the sound. Finally, he used the boss to knock her out before making her change clothes to prevent others from recognizing her. At this time, Cowell arrived in the tunnel, having heard that strange noise, and caught Linny red-handed. So Linny proceeded to knock him out too before stuffing him into that box. Afterward, Linny passed the unconscious Halsey to his accomplice through the magic box in the audience stands, before operating the devices such that Cowell's death would be ruled an accident. And there you have it. That's the truth behind what happened. Does the defendant's side have any objections to Lady Farina's description? The key to refuting Lady Farina is the order of events, what Linny experienced, and what he saw. Well, that's true. According to Linny, he left via the vent after entering the tunnel. He couldn't have had that altercation with Halsey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Linny went to the room that contains the Oratrice's core. This is the actual truth. Linny did not take part in the underground altercation. He only witnessed traces of the aftermath. Is that was that hard? That was very easy. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. I use my reading comprehension skills. In other words, 
You believe that he knew nothing of the incident? That's right! <laughs> I'm just teasing. I just, I just paid attention to the blue. <laughs> Moreover, I believe my opposition's reasoning is flawed. <laughs> my reasoning? The onstage equipment was clearly tampered with in a premeditated fashion. However, you say that Cowell bumped into Linny by chance. If that's the case, then if Cowell hadn't entered the tunnel, who was the entire setup meant to kill? Assuming that what you say is true, Linny only needed to kidnap the young girl to cause a new disappearance case. What would the point of killing someone on stage be? Oh, they have a point. <laughs> that's right, you Sucks to suck, motherfucker. And why they're partners of mine. They've managed to turn things around. Oh, well, your denial is very strident. I'll give you that. But what proof do you have to back your claims? Do you remember how you refuted Linny's alibi initially? <laughs> of course I do. If he had been in the magic box the whole time, how could he have not heard that sound? Why do you ask? You're saying that he wasn't. Your claim has now become my weapon. <laughs> which of the evidence that Linny wasn't in the tunnel when used... Which is the evidence that Linny wasn't in the tunnel when the crime took place? Ooh, wow. Irrelevant, irrelevant, irrelevant. Okay. Irrelevant, irrelevant, irrelevant. Relevant, irrelevant, irrelevant. Okay. Which is the evidence that Linny wasn't in the tunnel when the crime took place? Which is the evidence that Linny wasn't in the tunnel when the crime took place? Wasn't that? I don't understand the language here. Which is the evidence that Linny wasn't in the tunnel when the crime took place? That's just talking about who she is. It's not that because. Are you sure we don't need to give this? Robot? Damn it! That's right. Lenny wasn't in the box or oh, in the tunnel. Oh, 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 That's oh. why he didn't. was the guard investigation report indicates that the fireworks released near the end of the show ignited and burned through the ropes suspending the water tank above the stage the caused water tank to fall and kill Cowell. if Lenny is no longer under suspicion the only the other members of the troop would have been able to tamper with the props Linny gave a detail. Interesting music. Linny gave a detailed account of how the trick was supposed to work. By using a box inside of a box, the idea was for the box containing the audience member to be transported across via a tunnel underneath, and Linny himself would use this tunnel to get to the other side. 
Having changed her outfit, Lynette and her assistant would take charge of onstage interactions. The clothes belonged to Halsey, the lady who went missing, were found in the tunnel. The reason for this remains unknown. The deceased's name is Cowell. He's Lenny's assistant. assistant. He wouldn't have been able to handle it because he, he was would have on been able stage. To tamper with the equipment. Oh, well, that's true. Halsey is the missing person and an ordinary audience member. Or did she have her own scheme all along? Could there have been a third person involved? Is that really a possibility? Fuck. Halsey is really? the missing person. In Oh, I guess that makes sense. The deceased's name is Cowell. Well, I would not Lenny's have thought assistant. about that. Why would he Cowell... Would... He was on stage. Okay, I don't know. Huh? Uh, that can't be right. He was on Are stage. must do next is recreate the truth what Cowell did and how he went from would-be perpetrator to victim no one entered or left the opera house through its entrances so where would the criminal have wanted are you guys to straight up spoiling this for me I hope not. I'll be so annoyed. The deceased's name is Cowell, Linny's assistant. He would have been able to tamper with the equipment. They are okay. Palsy's clothing was in the tunnel, so there must have been some fear that she would attract attention. The sound we heard may have come from a clash between the missing Halsey and the criminal. Linny was not in the tunnel at that moment, which gave our criminal ample time. It would have been tough for both people to fit into that vent. Linny was not in the tunnel at that moment. It would have been tough for both people to fit into that vent. Yeah, no, it looked like the same bumped into when he well. was talking to Linny in the box. I thought that that was Cowell. I guess it was somebody else. They both have masks on. No one entered or left the opera house through its entrances. So where would the criminal have wanted to take Halsey? The deceased's name is Cowell. Linny... Halsey's clothing was in the tunnel. So there must have been some fear that she would attract attention. The sound we heard may have come from a clash between the... Fuck. Oh, these two are wrong. Okay. No one entered or left the opera. Halsey's clothing was in the tunnel. It would have been tough for both people to... Entered or left. Halsey's clothing was in the tunnel. Fuck. The sound we heard may have come from a clash. No one entered or left the. Strange noise could likely have been the sound of Cowell and Hale Halsey struggling. Linny was not in the tunnel for one minute. This would have given time for Cowell to bring to Halsey out of, but according to the guard's testimony, no one entered or left the opera house. So even if he had taken her, there'd be no means of exiting. 
exiting from the box would have been in full view of the audience, pretty much guaranteeing that they would have just been discovered. What's wrong, Traveler? Are you still having trouble figuring things out? Where in the world did Halsey go? <laughs> I see how it is. So this was all just a bluff. And here I thought you had something to show for it. Oh, it was a it, it was a scripted fail. Ooh, okay, good. I was like, I swear I look. Since we're at a dead end, why not consider a different track? Just like the trick as it transpired, the end result must have been utterly different from the magician's initial design. If only we knew how Halsey disappeared. Well, that would be nice, but the tunnel only has three exits, and none of them seem very likely. But what would Cowl want like with Halsey? This is a magic trick where you can just make a real live person disappear. You know, like you did from that water tank, Lynette. <sighs> Escaping from the water tank. Wait, could it have been the water? <laughs> Excuse my interruption, dear opponents. But do you not see that the crowd is growing impatient? There is no greater sin in this opera house than an awkward delay in the Wait. performance. If the defense is unable to make further effective arguments, we will move on to the next stage of the trial. Hold on a second. Linny was not in the tunnel at that moment, which gave our criminal ample time. The sound we heard may have come from a clash between the missing Halsey and the criminal. But that's not a fact, so it's like... The deceased's name is Cowell, Linny's assistant. He would have been able to tamper with the equipment. The vase was not broken by chance. It was used to cover important evidence. The water. Oh, I don't get it. It all comes together if Halsey disappeared instead of being kidnapped. Lynette escaped from the water tank, vanishing gradually and leaving only clothes behind. If there's a similar method where a person could be transformed into water... What the fuck? <laughs> Just a moment, please. I do hope you know how preposterous you sound at the moment. How could a person ever be transformed into water? I request this that we... This reality we're talking about here, not some magic trick. I request that we examine Cowell's personal effects. We might find something there. <sighs> Must we really? I should think that of anyone. Did she Your do it? friend Linny already knows this truth very well. Magic tricks are ultimately just illusions and misdirection. But Halsey's disappearance is very real. We're talking about two completely different things. Even so, I trust the Traveler's judgment. The truth must be out there somewhere. Perhaps a new line of reasoning may open if we try to gather all the focal points that don't make sense. Since Cal was the deceased, we haven't placed much attention on him. But given that we aren't making much progress with the case, it wouldn't hurt to have a look at his belongings, would it? <sighs> People really do come up with all sorts of harebrained schemes when at the end of their rope. The way I see it, your suggestion that we broaden the scope of our investigation is nothing but a tactic for stalling the trial. Nevertheless, I believe that this is a reasonable request on the part of an attorney. Since the trial does indeed appear to be at an impasse, I believe that additional evidence may help us make more progress. Guards, please step into the lounge and examine the personal effects of the deceased, Cowell. We are still examining the items, but we have already made critical progress that we feel must be shared with everyone post-haste. We discovered several test tubes of fluid within Cowell's baggage, each labeled separately. The notebook in his backpack claims that these fluids are... water from the Primordial Sea. The Primordial Sea? The note's contents also indicate that Cowell belonged to an organization that sells illegal drugs and that he had an accomplice. The notebook has many entries concerning safe usage of these fluids, in which the keyword 
dissolve appears many times. One of these tubes was labeled Opera Epicles, along with yesterday's date. It is empty. The notes also state that these dissolution properties work exclusively on people from Fontaine. It's likely that Halsey was chosen as some sort of test subject. As such, we believe that the defense's hypothesis is, in fact, supported by sufficient evidence. You gotta be kidding! People dissolving into water? Could something so ridiculous actually be true? Wait a moment. This reminds me of a certain prophecy. But mm. it's just a coincidence, isn't it? Huh. If people can become water, does that mean that the water tank's real use was as a means to hide water stains? And if Cowell was targeting that girl... Wait just a minute. Could that mean... <sighs> you two, with me, quick! Demoiselle, wait! What about your partners? Mm, let's go. Just trust me. Order! Order! <laughs> it is undeniable that further examination of the deceased's personal effects has yielded some surprising results. But we cannot yet verify the veracity of these clues. Still, let us assume that these clues are indeed authentic, albeit with the understanding that Ms. Halsey has yet to be found. Guards, please continue examining the items along these lines. Mr. Linney. It appears your hypothesis is supported by the evidence, so please continue speaking. Of course. Thank you, Your Honor. If we uphold this hypothesis, I believe that many of this case's seemingly unrelated clues can be connected together. Right! Like the metal hook! That one didn't make sense at all. Hmm. Let's think about this. Cowell's methods must have something to do with that water from the primordial sea. The rope that held the water tank up was lit by the fireworks and snapped. As such, the focus here is on the water, and not the tank. The deceased's name is Cowell, Linny's assistant. He would have been able to tamper with the equipment. Now it seems like the hook rope was not meant for another magic trick, but was instead some form of triggering mechanism. The water from the Primordial Sea should already have been prepped before Halsey entered the magic box. Lynette was in the magic box on stage the entire time. Did she have something to do with this? I kind of think she does. I remember there was something else within the inner layer of that box. The water from the Primordial Sea. Now it seems like the hook rope was not meant for another magic trick. Lynette was in the magic box on stage. The God, wouldn't that be time. interesting if Lynette was the person? I love that. The rope that held the water tank up was lit by the fireworks and snapped. At Fuck. Oh, I missed all those? Oh man, so it's not Lynette. Of course Cowell. it's not. Would have been so interesting. I remember there was something mm -hmm. the water from the primordial okay the water from the primordial sea this has been wrong each time so Lynette was in the magic box I remember there was something Lynette was in we the have magic to like get him in the right spot I guess okay so it's not Lynette <clears throat> okay I remember there was damn Imagine if it was Lynette because she's worried about something and didn't want to keep going with the show because... Oh, that would have been so cool. Bummer. Ahem. It's Ace Detective Paimon's time! In the original plan, Cowell would tamper with the water tank rope and the number selector securing his target. Mm -hmm. When the magic box containing Halsey was lowered, the metal hook would retract gradually and pierce the balloon at the top of the box. When the balloon attached to the box popped, the water from the primordial sea inside it would pour down and dissolve Halsey. Afterward, Cowell would enter the tunnel and break the flower vase to conceal the water inside the tunnel, with the remaining evidence being covered up by the water tank on stage. But... He encountered something unexpected in the tunnel and wound up being fatally hit by the same water tank.
tank he meant to use to cover his tracks. Huh. That does make sense. That actually links together a lot of the more confusing pieces of evidence. Yeah, I don't, I don't need... I don't need tips. <laughs> oh dear. What do I do? Even I think they sound convincing now. Have I falsely accused an innocent person? <laughs> what a humiliation. Now, it seems like the only point of contention remaining is the exact circumstances that led to Cal's death. His notes mentioned he had an accomplice who could be related to the situation. On that note, the guards have just contacted me indicating that they uncovered new evidence. I shall now invite him on stage to share it with us. Thank you, Your Honor. We were just inspecting the luggage of the other people involved in this case, and we found an identical sample of the water from the Primordial Sea among Linny's personal effects. What? Framed. It can't be. Hmm. <clears throat> it's her. It's Linda. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, how wonderfully comedic to have your own counterattack only to come back and wound you. Does this not clear all doubt? My dear citizens, my loyal audience, allow me to present my reasoning and bring this performance to a swift close. Linny did not need to take part in the dissolution of the young woman at all. Indeed, he did leave the scene via the vent. Oops. Having made modifications to the prompts beforehand, his accomplice Cowell then caused Halsey to vanish using the water from the primordial sea. But upon his return, in cruel avarice, Linny desired sole credit and prepared to do away with his partner in crime. Ultimately, he knocked Cowell out, and the tool meant to cover the crime up also became a murder weapon. Now, as much as I regret having come to such a viciously straightforward conclusion, it does seem that the famed Fatui is quite the cold-blooded and ruthless organization. Am I right? Mr. Linny. We've used up all the evidence we collected. There's no way for us to make a rebuttal here. Is this the end of the road? Oh no! Mm, I don't can't think of anything either! It doesn't look like there's any way around this! Oh, seems using the water as new evidence was too good a move. Oh, why did this have to happen now? I think we've all seen enough now, and we have ample witnesses to my flawless reasoning. I believe this is indeed the finale! Now then, my good, noble Chief Justice, should we not, in your view, move- huh? Excuse me, everyone, but I must interject! Miss, I must ask you not to shout and to respect the ongoing legal proceedings. Oh, come on, don't be hasty. I have a good reason for interrupting, you know. Now, would anyone here like to take a little break from all this debate and see a little magic? I'll show you an amazing trick, one that can bring a the young tango's really interesting to disappeared me. back in the flesh, right before your very eyes. Please, do the honors, Mr. Linny, if you would be so kind. But what in the world is she saying? No offense, miss, but miracles like that are beyond my scope as a magician. Come on now, don't be silly. Magic is all about misdirection, isn't it? It often conceals the truth while presenting a fascinating illusion. But once everyone believes the illusion, can't magic reveal the truth to them once again? Wouldn't such a trick be the most marvelous finale to today's performance? Come on, Lenny and Lynette. Give it another go. No, I know it's an obvious oh, theme, but I'm asking... Has made the necessary I'm asking why, but, musically, as the and stars of the show, it's tango. I think I should leave the final performance to you. She must be from Not Long, or, or... Or maybe there's tango... French... Hmm. 
And voila! What the fuck? Um, uh, sorry for the interruption. Wait, isn't that Halsey? So the whole thing about people dissolving wasn't true after all? To be clear, I'm only here because this person told me that if I testified, the merit of doing so would lessen my sentence. Oh. I was hiding outside this room listening to the proceedings because I was afraid that I would be the one put on trial. I was just feeling happy that no one had noticed me. And then before I knew it, she caught me. <laughs> That'll teach you to underestimate us three. Where should I begin? Oh. I'm sorry. I'm the one who killed Cowl. I admit it. But what Why? Firstly, my name isn't Halsey. It's Lillian. And I'm originally from Mondstadt. I heard that Linny's show was going to be a real thriller. But I missed the chance to buy a ticket, so I stole one. That's how I make a living. I steal stuff here and there. And I'd never been caught before. But I was noticed at the harbor a few days ago, and I barely got away. Lenny was the one who caught me in the act. Hey! No wonder oh. you look familiar! So you were the thief! Lenny even mentioned that you were pretty skilled! Oh, yeah. Well, and I thought that would have been the end of it, but then the number selector chose me. He even mentioned the Fortress of Meripede. That's a prison, isn't it? So you can imagine how shocked I was. I thought he was on to me for sure. So I played along with the show while looking for an opening to flee. But then I got water poured on me for no reason, and then someone jumped into the tunnel to nab me. I wasn't going to take that lying down, so I knocked him out and stuffed him into the box. Well, it was still cold. <laughs> there was nowhere to run from there, though, so I had to change my clothes and hide in a box containing performance costumes. I slipped out after the first guard arrived at the scene and continued hiding inside the opera house. Can a person even hide in there? If there's a practiced hand at concealment, probably. A professional thief could make it work. But I swear, I didn't know that the water tank would fall down. Really, I swear it. Had I known that, I wouldn't have put him in the magic box. I may be a thief, but I'm no killer. Well, that makes everything pretty clear now, doesn't it? Yeah. Now it's time to refute the Hydra Archon's previous reasoning. This time, we need to tell the entire story from Lillianne's perspective. That's correct. Lillianne was afraid that she would be recognized if she left, so she changed clothes and hid, biding her time. Just what one might expect of an experienced thief. The flower vase was not broken to cover anything up, but it was smashed during the struggle between Lillianne and Cowell.
the strange sound wasn't from a fight. It was Lillianne's attempt to break out when she was frightened. And it's Ace Detective Pike! That was hard. Been selected out of the blue, Lillianne panicked. Her panic only intensified after she entered the tunnel and had water poured on her head. So she kicked the door open, producing the thud we all hearing the commotion. Cowl leapt into the tunnel, only to discover Tango is that Lillianne Spanish by nature. He did not know that Lillianne was not from Fontaine. Oh, which is why she wouldn't dissolve. A... Right. You made her way in by stealing a ticket. <laughs> Mistakenly believing that the water from the primordial sea needed time to take effect, he tried to force Lillianne mm. back into the box. The two broke the flower vase during the struggle, but Lillianne came out on top. She's like, why are you pouring water on my head? No way of escaping. She changed her clothes and hid in the costume trunk until the performance ended. No, Tango originates from Spain. I'm sure there is some. Well, the, the dance, I she believe. She knew that she would have to go through guard inspection if she tried to leave afterward. So. She has been trapped in the opera house these last two days. She had already become desperately hungry by the time we were chatting over macarons. So, she swiped two of them right under our noses. Talk about a sneaky thief. At this point, all the events that happened in the tunnel have now come to light. Ah, so that's the whole story. Bravo! Bravo! So weird. Now then. Lady Farina, do you wish to speak against the defense's statements? I... Uh, um... Please answer the question, Lady Farina. Also, if I may add, the trial has not yet ended. As such, I request that the prosecution not leave the room before the proceedings have concluded. <sighs> what? Are you reading my mind now? <sighs> no. I have no further arguments. I admit defeat. But really, could you at least have left me with some dignity? Wow. Look at that. She's like a deflated balloon now. If there are no objections, then as the Chief Justice of Fontaine, I shall once again repeat the full sequence of events. The actual perpetrator of the serial disappearances, Cowell, selected his next victim from the audience reservation list. With some modifications to the selector, he could ensure that the pre-selected young woman would be chosen. To cover up any evidence while committing the deed, Cowell thought of allowing the water tank to fall. <clears throat> yeah, but which why? Would conceal the water left behind. What's, this, after what's the, young, the game He also here? tampered with the rope suspending the water tank, using the fireworks at the end of the performance to cause the tank to drop and hide the watermarks. He poured the water from the primordial sea into a balloon during the preparation of the magic box and stuck it to the box's lid. Finally, he passed the prepared hook on a rope through the gap in the magic box's door when bringing the young woman to said box. When the magic trick officially began, the box containing the woman was lowered into the tunnel, tightening the hook rope and bursting the balloon containing the water. If all had gone to plan, the young woman would be dissolved at this time. However, Lillianne was not from Fontaine and thus fled the box with a loud noise. Realizing that there was trouble, Cowell entered mm. the tunnel and met Lillianne. Thinking that the waters had not yet taken effect, he decided to proceed. However, his opponent was more capable than he thought, and he was overcome, knocked unconscious, and placed into the magic box. I see. And thus became his own final victim. <clears throat> Lillianne, according to her own statements, then changed clothes and hid until the performance ended, before hiding in other parts of the opera house. This doesn't feel redundant As at all. Lady, That's, I needed this. He was in the underground structures within the opera house and was thus ignorant of these happenings. From this reconstruction of events, we can conclude that Linny, the accused, is in fact innocent. While there is much in Linny and Lillian's conduct that should still be investigated separately, this case at least can be handed over to the oratrice to make the final decision. 
Oh, Honkai Star Rail right there. As such, Linny and Lynette are officially declared not guilty. <laughs> Victory for Ace Detective Paimon! Great work, partners. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Let's not celebrate just yet. Next, <clears throat> I think we deserve an explanation, Guard Vaughn. How did you find the water from the primordial oh. sea in Linny's baggage? Uh, right! Your discovery caused me to make a serious mistake, you know. Or was that not a discovery, but false evidence that you dare to bring before this court? I suspect that the accomplice mentioned in Cowell's notes was not Linny, but you, yes? I... Uh... I'm sure you know what you must do to lessen your sentence. Speak quickly! Unless you want to earn yourself a one-way ticket to Coupon Town. I... I was just following orders. We were supposed to place blame for the serial disappearances onto Linny, and thus cause suspicion to fall on the Fatui. The higher-ups said this was the best opportunity to do so. And now that your plan has fallen through, and the secrets of the water have been revealed, you have become a liability to said higher-ups, yes? Therefore, you would be wise to tell everything you know, and seek the protection of the guards. Yes, I'll tell you everything I know. Our boss discovered that the water can cause people to dissolve. It can also be made into a potion, which when extremely diluted, can cause people to experience unforgettable exhilaration. We've been in this business for a while now, and have made decent mora off it. The disappearances were also the boss's idea. I mean, this Who's the boss? boss we're talking about. The <laughs> huh. What? He turns into water and now he can no longer talk such ruthlessness <sighs> i shouldn't have expected any less of them an outrageous act all present please submit to inspection immediately thanks carster um, I haven't. So, we're just going back now? That's... Traveler, Paimon, please wait. Winnie. I know you may not want to speak to me right now. Maybe you don't even want to look at me. But still, let me thank you again for defending me to the end. Even after you learn that I'm a member of the Fatui. I just didn't wish to see anyone be falsely accused. I just wanted to make sure that we were square. I guess. But regardless, I'd like the opportunity to set things straight. So the I thing that we're hearing uh, in the Tavat story trailers I've spoken to you as myself, are the main themes of the characters time. in their specific moments in the region. So if this is the theme that we heard at the Tavat story trailer with Linny and Lynette, that means what you heard in Notlan will reference that character that they showed, and that means that Conria, that music, well, we didn't see who it was, but whatever, those that's the theme of that, like, cr that situation. As for why I'm a Fatus, it's because the goals of the House of the Hearth align with those of an orphan like me. That that was how Father, who you might know as the Knave, approached recruiting us back then, too. The Knave? One who controls the house of the hearth? The name. She's your father? That's right. And since we're here, I was wondering. Would you mind hearing a story? Yeah, but what I'm saying. It's about my past. I'm saying. I'm saying, uh. It's related to the characters that we saw. I'm not saying it's directly related to them. Back when our parents first died. Lynette and I were left wandering the streets. To survive, I took to surreptitiously observing an older street performer who did magic. It took me several days to figure out how he pulled off his amazing tricks. I took my sister through several streets until we found a crowded corner, and we began to perform magic tricks there. To my surprise, we proved to be pretty popular. 
and we could at least stop worrying about where our next meal would come from for okay. a time. But I didn't want my sister to remain a street rat together with me forever. Before long, an aristocrat came to me and claimed that he wished to take us in after watching my performances. So you went from orphans to nobility just like that? That was how we felt at first, too. As if fate was on our side and we could say goodbye to those painful days. But I gradually discovered that while we were called foster children, he was really after my talent for magic tricks. Yeah, but to be fair, I didn't know that. We're talking about our Latino here, so that this kind he of... He would constantly take me to all sorts of banquets to garner attention, which he would then use to expand his social circles. That doesn't seem too bad either. Better than roaming the streets at any rate. <laughs> it took a while for me to realize just how dark his heart really was. I mean, think about it. Child, child, we know what to expect with child. We know that child is always two-faced. We know that he's double-crossing. We met Linny and Lynette. They seem like they're protecting us, and yet they're hiding this giant secret. That's why he's being cold. The, the Traveler is being cold because child is sort of like this, like, battle of, like, there's a bravado aspect to that. It's it's almost like he he knows what to expect with child. He knows that child is manipulative. He knows that child is sneaky. And yet they've established that they're both you know, sort of equals in that way. But Linny seems fairly innocent and honest and pure, but then, which is why the whole facade of um, being very, like, flamboyant, really bubbly, <clears throat> that was all the intention of, like, creating a fake persona, which is why I think the Traveler is not really defending them, because it's just kind of like, well, you, you duped me. I already know what child is like, so I don't need to stress about what child is like. We have an understanding. We have mutual respect because he's a, a, a talented, strong, capable warrior. And I know that he's always scheming. Whereas with Linny, we don't have that. That's why. After one particular performance at a banquet, I discovered that Lynette was not on the same return vehicle as me. I waited a long time after we returned home, but she did not come back. I went to that noble's bedroom and asked him about her whereabouts. The answer he gave me was, she caught the eye of the most eminent person at the banquet, so I sent her over as a gift. I mean, you'll be able to perform your magic regardless of who your assistant is, yes? Oh no. So he was gonna... <sighs> but wouldn't Fontaine's laws deal with such people? As far as outsiders are concerned, this is a relationship akin to adoption or foster care. And they have their ways of escaping the eye of the law. Villains. So what happened after that? I managed to ferret out the location of the mansion of that so-called eminent person and hurried through the night. But by the time I leaped over the walls, avoided the guards and made my way in, all I saw was the moonlit ground covered in blood and the knave standing there in the darkness. So... She'd already taken care of that guy. That's right. She had rescued my sister before she could come to any harm, and had even discovered several girls hidden in a basement, all of them orphans. Father, I mean, the knave, might have seen something in me, and so she made me an offer. The House of the Hearth welcomes you, for your interests align with ours. Here, none will ever betray you. Indeed, betrayal shall never be permitted here. I was hesitant to trust her. I mean, I had just been betrayed by nobles, but she was also quick to destroy the noble who had taken us in at first, giving us back our freedom. Oh, so that's how the two of you joined the House of the Hearth. The knave is after the Gnosis, isn't she? She has her own plans. She has gained permission from the Sarita to first use the Gnosis's power when she obtains it. She plans to use it to find a way to break the prophecy and save Fontaine. So, she believes in that prophecy too? That's right. The whole House of the Hearth is currently working to combat that crisis. Today's case has also proven that people from Fontaine can indeed dissolve into some sort of water, thus further supporting the prophecy. I'm hoping this marks the beginning of Genshin's descent into darkness, because they've been taking their time showing it in the main story. Story, yeah. One million percent. Finally. All of us house members here, Lady Arlecchino herself included, are from Fontaine. We won't give up on defending our homeland. To us orphans, the only connection we have left to this world, apart from our family, 
is our homeland. So, from small deeds like distributing magic pockets, to huge schemes like stealing a Gnosis, everything is aimed at dealing with that prophecy. I'm sorry, but I still can't completely trust you. It's alright, I understand. The only thing I can do is relate all this to you. I just hope you can understand that even as a member of the house, I have never stopped making my own decisions, and that I believe what I'm doing is right. If you should need anything at all in the future, feel free to find me. I will do my best to help you, as plain Linny. Um, bye Linny! Ooh, okay, we finished Act 1. Hey there! What was with the disappearing act you pulled right as the trial ended? Were you looking for us, Navia? Well, this whole thing isn't exactly over, is it? I do feel that we're getting closer to solving the serial disappearances case, though. Don't you think so, too? Well, I'm... I'm sorry, Navia. Huh? What's wrong, my dear partner? I was really only trying to defend Linny. I wasn't necessarily looking into serial disappearances cases. Besides! Are you sure we're the ones who can crack a case that's been cold for decades now? And given that there's new evidence from the trial, there should be a trail of breadcrumbs for the Hydro Archon's people to follow now! Ah. I see. Well, I won't lie. I'm a little shocked to hear that from you. But I suppose you are just travelers who have only arrived in Fontaine after all. Sorry. I might have been too presumptuous. Don't say that, Navia. Ah, oh, and we were having so much fun investigating with you, too. It was like having new waters flowing into a stagnant mire, causing new hope to spring forth and the reflection in the murk to become clearer. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. I am a bit prone to nostalgia. Don't mind me. Wait, shall we have a farewell meal? You know, to commemorate our time as partners? Huh? Do we really need to get that formal? Uh, well, guess you really did treat us as partners, huh? Well, I just like to have a proper ending to every important memory. That way there are no regrets later. Anyway, it would just be a meal, so it shouldn't take up too much. You don't have to twist my arm's arm if I- Oh, wonderful. In that case, why don't we return to the Court of Fontaine and head to the Hotel de Boer? I believe we'll make it just in time for dinner. All right then, let's have our food. Ooh. The courtroom scenes are not based on any opera that I know. None of that is related to an opera. I mean, there's, um, there are court things, there are court scenes in opera for certain, but, but not, not like that, no. Um, I'll be right back, I have to use the restroom. I'll take one more day off and knock out the rest of the work once I'm feeling up to it.
I got a new letter from an informant. It looks like the situation has changed again. How's your weekend going, chat? We cannot just rely on the ocean's self-cleaning abilities. You're gonna do it with me? Okay. I'm just eating really quick. I need to eat a snack. On the ocean Navigating the world is a whole lot easier with a few different identities to choose from. Need me to come up with some for you? I came here several times with my father when I was little, but stopped eating here as often after growing up. I hope the food here will be to your taste. Oh, don't worry. We haven't eaten at a hotel like this in a while. <laughs> Paimon's getting excited already. Well, in that case, I'll go order for us first. Please wait here a moment. Everything looks so good! People in Fontaine sure know how to enjoy life! Why, of course! Go ahead, try whatever you like. If the food's good, I'll make a group reservation for the rest of Spina di Rosula next time. And if it's not? Well, uh... <laughs> then I'll still bring everyone. Albeit with only one dish per table. You, uh, Sure have your own way of doing things. Oh, we called this a farewell meal, but we could also treat it like a victory feast, right? We did just win that case after all. Oh, true. Very true. In that case, boss, we'll have another two dishes. Huh! Paimon didn't mean that you had to order even more food. <laughs> Speaking of cases, do you think that the mastermind behind the serial disappearances will get caught soon now that this has all happened? Well, we've certainly taken a big step forward, but I feel that's about it. We know that there's an organization that means to dissolve these young women, but we still don't know what they are really after. If it hadn't happened right in front of us, Paimon wouldn't have ever believed that a person could be dissolved like that. <laughs> right? Yet it was because this was such a preposterous notion that the investigation could never really move forward before. Ugh. If only that guy could have finished speaking! We were so close to hearing who was behind it. In such investigations, even the smallest step can seem like a yawning chasm if the trail of clues is cut off. To be honest, I don't have high hopes for any follow-up that the authorities might conduct. It's not that I don't have faith in their ability. It's just that a different perspective is required <clears throat> in some matters. It's easy to guard against and deceive a single, narrow perspective. A shift in thinking is required at such times in order to produce a breakthrough. Which is exactly why the Spina di Rosula exists. Those highfalutin folk are not all-knowing. That's the why cup of coffee, exist. the cup of tea is as big as her face. In fact, it's bigger. Falls through, where their watch fails them. That's the kind of problems we solve. Hmm. Seems Paimon thought things were simpler than they actually are. <sighs> it's all right. Well, <laughs> this was supposed to be a farewell meal, so I doubt you have further interest in this business, right? Let's talk about something else. Like, uh, what are your future plans? We wanted to ask the Hydro Archon for some information, but we haven't had much opportunity to do so. That's true. We didn't have a chance to speak to her after the trial ended. It didn't really seem like the right time or place to do it anyway. Hmm. I see. So, your primary objective, which has been foiled so far, was to have a chat with the Hydro Archon. 
I've heard that there's a long line of people waiting to meet Lady Farina. I suspect you'll be waiting for quite a while, considering that you missed your chance today. Yeah, we've heard that she's super popular here in Fontaine, and that it'll be tough getting any of her time. <coughs> <coughs> well, would you consider some more, uh, unique ways? Perhaps even methods of, uh, let's say, questionable legality? Guess that's Spina di Rosula's boss for you. Chock full of sketchy ideas. Well, what did you have in mind? Well, one way would be to infiltrate a performance troupe at the Opera House, only to abandon your act at the play's climax and ask to speak to her after the performance. <coughs> I'm sure Lady Farina would be eager to see the ending, and would agree in order to finish watching the play, don't you think? Uh, could you suggest something a little more practical? This plan seems pretty hard to pull off. We'd have to go learn how to act, and acting's really hard. <sighs> All right, here's another. Find a way to conceal yourselves under her bed. Then, wake her up in the, the dead fuck? of night and demand answers. Don't let her go back to sleep until she answers all your questions. I can personally testify that this one works. When I'm sleepy, I'll do anything as long as I can finally get some sleep. Uh, that might work, but that's not really the problem. The problem is we don't want to get ourselves arrested. Ah, valid point. I overlooked that part. I was just thinking about leveraging a person's desire for sleep. How can you overlook something like that? <laughs> all right, all right, no more joking around. Huh, perhaps you could... Oh, I don't know. Cut the line when she's on a break. You did defeat her in court, clearing citizens of hers from false accusations. False accusations she had nearly upheld personally. I imagine that she feels quite ashamed about the whole thing. You mean, that if we catch her while she's on a break, she might be too embarrassed to refuse? Oh, that does make some sense. It's worth a try, but would someone with her personality really feel shame? Why don't we give it a try after this meal? You know, strike while the iron is hot and all. Huh? Pine uh, was this your drink? <laughs> Sorry about that. Paimon wasn't really paying attention, and the cup was right next to Paimon. No, it's fine. We're just about done here. All right. Honestly, Paimon <clears> wouldn't <throat> recommend Fonta anyway. It tastes kind of salty and yeah, I'd have to agree. My drink also tasted that way, too. Is that so? Huh. Well, in that case, we'll have to blacklist the Fonta here, then. If we're all finished eating, then I'll go pay. Yeah, we're stuffed. Thanks for the treat, Navia. Oh, so full. Paimon can barely float anymore. You could try walking, you know. Nah, that would be so... normal. You know, like you. Hmm. Okay. As for expenses this month, we're left with... Hey, Navia! What are you doing over there? Oh, nothing, nothing. It was just a meal, you know? Nothing the Spina di Rosula can't cover. <laughs> Seems that that was pretty tough for her. <sighs> Let's get ready to try to meet the Hydro Archon again. <laughs> Thanks for Bye, paying Nadia. and messing up your bank account. Talk to you later. So this is goodbye, huh? Well, if you do encounter any other trouble in Fontaine, you're always welcome to contact the Spina di Rosula. I'll give your requests the highest priority. Uh, in any case, I wish you smooth sailing. I'll see you again, partner. See ya! people around anymore. Looks like that boat we took to Araneus might have been the last one. Vache. Vache. Hmm. Looks like we're back here again, huh? <clears throat> Traveler, are you hearing voices again? Yes, and it's 
clearer than it was during the day. Ugh. That's kind of spooky. Are you sure we don't want to come back in the morning? Vashe? Vashe? Hey, why are you still walking towards it? There might be something nasty in the water. I can feel strong emotions. Things are getting a little blurry. Huh? Hang on. Paimon can kind of hear a voice. It's calling for... Vashe, right? Hey, Traveler? Stop walking! Come on, wake up! Thanks, Sound. Yeah, I'm loving it. Oh, Osile. Oceanid, yes. Or not Osile, sorry. Where's this? Vashe, are you... My dear Vashe? No, wait. You seem to be someone else. Do you know Vashe? Do you know where my love is? I'm afraid not. I'm sorry. Who are you? I'm... Wait. Who am I? I'm very sorry. I fear I do not know. Oh my god. Wait. Are they turning into my oceanids? Feel like they have been washed People are turning into flood. oceanids. So many fragments dissolved amidst the tide. Never to be recovered. How much have I lost? How many things that I once held dear while on Oh, shit. Have I since forgotten? Y you were once human? Yes, that is what I was once. But now, I am but the consciousness of one who has lost their form. You lost your form? I do not know how I came to be like this either. I only vaguely remember being covered in light blue water. Damn. And then all grew dim. Light blue water? Could that have been... Could she be one of the girls who were dissolved? <sighs> I also remember going to many places. I loved adventure. Loved exploring places of peril. No matter where I went, Vache would go with me. Ooh. I knew how dearly he loved me. And I also loved him equally as much. But now... We can no longer go back. The pain of such parting. I never knew how heavy it could be. So you need me to find him? No. Our reunion no longer has any meaning. There is no way for us to create any new memories. Thank you. The thought of me gives him no sucker. So let it lie forgotten beneath the waters. If you meet Vashe, Tell him not to look for me. Tell him to move on. That is the only thing I still remember. I believe it will be hard for him to forget you. Perhaps that is so. <clears throat> As I was submerged in the waters, losing consciousness, I saw Vache above the surface. His eyes were filled with such sorrow. Such If only I could have comforted him. I told him that I did not suffer. <clears throat> Indeed, I had felt a great warmth. Well, that means Vache was a witness to the fact that you dissolved. Is that what you call it? Dissolving? If anything, I consider it a form of release. It was a state of neither fear nor frenzy, with only an endless peace, like the water still surface. I could also liken it to being a thirsty person who drinks water for the first time and only then sees how they have lived for so long in a world of endless want and anxiety. Hmm. It seems that after the body is dissolved, some measure of the consciousness still remains. I think I hear your companion. It's time for you to go, I think. Ah, right. I wonder how much time has passed in reality. Farewell, then. I am glad that you were able to say... Man, that's messed up. So the... Oh. Something's happening. Dear God, 
It's a whole army of Gardamex. Chlorand? So cool. One of the coolest character designs I've seen, not against it. Hope she doesn't run the same patch as Farina. She absolutely will. She'll be the four star, right? Could you imagine? It'd be awesome if she was a five star, but I, I have this like sneaking suspicion that Farina will be the five star, and then thank you for lending Clorinda us your will be there, will be the four star. But before I do so, could you explain mm. how you managed to show up here? She looks a bit I like Zayla, yeah? Followed you. It seemed to me that danger has followed you more closely as of late. I'd love it for I her to be a five-star. I believe that following star. someone without their knowledge is actually called stalking, is it not? Mr. Kalos's last wish was for me to ensure your safety. Mr. Kalos? And I will not betray his trust. He would do the same were he alive today. Maria do not Kalos. speak of my father. Sorry, oh, Demosa. Navia Kalos. I was not strong enough. Thank you for your aid, Miss Clorand, but do keep an eye out for your manner of speech. I believe we all wish to avoid unnecessary emotional harm. Sorry, I did not consider your feelings. Whatever. What else do you know? How did you come to the conclusion that I'd be in grave danger? I doubt I know much more than you, but I believe that the mastermind behind the serial disappearances is very powerful. Your performance tonight will almost certainly attract their attention. Huh. I'm sure they've known about me. To be honest, I'm shocked it's taken them this long to act against me. And what about these Gardamex? I thought only those associated with the Maison Guardianage could control them. None of these mecha have serial numbers. I was sure to check a moment ago. They are not the ones used by the authorities to enforce the law. I can only conclude that some powerful or wealthy party must have obtained them via illegal means. What if the Hydro Archon is accidentally turning people what? into... Your point being that they're out of Spina di Rosula's league then? Hmm. Yes. Be careful and do not act rashly. I will continue investigating no matter what. We will bring the truth to light. That's my father's true last wish. Regardless, thank you for your help today, Clarand. But, if you get any ideas, tell me first. I don't much appreciate being followed. I do not think that they'll strike again anytime soon. So I shall stop following you. Good day, all. Right. I suppose that's the best news we've gotten today. Demoiselle, I believe that Miss Clorand was being sincere with you. If we tried, we could attempt to thaw relations a little. I know, I just... She's... What just happened? What's that? Oh, thank goodness! Paimon thought we were done for! Those Gardamex came out of nowhere while you were unconscious! Man, I really wonder. Hmm. I really like this story. This is my favorite story by far. By far. And Azuma was good. And there was that champion duelist named Clorand who came out to save us too. Monstat was that. whatever. Paimon probably couldn't have fought them off otherwise. Liwa was all right. Zhongli talks too much. Uh, Sumeru was fine. I, I liked the Scaramouche sections. Oh. <laughs> the rest of it. Come now. Whatever. Forget all that polite really talk. It. That wasn't really a farewell meal we had back there. But this has been Not consistently me, anyway. interesting to In me. In truth. I hope that every meal we have together shall be a victory feast. As such, we're still partners. There's no need to thank me. It will take 
Fifty years for me to match Demoiselle's magnanimity. If it were me, I would have joined the Spina di Rosula on account of her goodwill long ago. <laughs> All right, you two. That's enough. Actually, Navia, how did you know that we were in danger? You sure did show up in the nick of time. Well, to be honest, that's just my you're opinion. The one who tipped us off, Paimon. Huh? Really? Paimon contributed to that? No, I mentioned it in the oh, zoo. Paimon's even more amazing than she thought. Yes, all thanks to you grabbing my drink by mistake. Uh, how did that help? After we parted ways, I was on the way back to one of our bases when I suddenly thought of what you said. That the Fanta tasted kind of salty and icky? Fanta only comes in sweet flavors. So how could it have tasted salty? The color of the drink, if I recall, had also been a bit off. Oh, shit. So the Fanta had been spiked with water from the primordial sea? I yes. like how Raiden was so done. If you hadn't Raiden Shogun is one of my favorite characters. Spina di Rosula is preparing the grandest of awards for you as we speak for saving the boss. Huh? Really? I sent people to Hotel de Boer to investigate, but whoever did this left no trace at all. That's when I figured out that you might be in danger and hurried here as quickly as I could. But why would they go after us too? All we did was defend Linny and Court and help clear his name. I love the mystery. Ugh. Up in this mess too, of uh, Raiden Shogun, well, the whole dynamic and the you duality. You did foil a plan that they were probably pretty proud of, and almost got their name in the process. Speaking of which, did anything strange happen when you drank the primordial seawater? Well, it can't be a coincidence that the traveler fainted just now. He said that he heard that voice calling for Vashe again. Oh, and this time Paimon heard it too, but it was real faint. Just. This situation have to do with the primordial seawater then? Does that mean the primordial seawater raises someone's sensitivity to hydro when it's used on people who are not from Fontaine? That doesn't sound like too much of a bad thing, to be honest. New intel? While you were out cold? Uh, well, let's hear it, shall we? Oh, that is important. Vache, that name doesn't ring a bell. I suppose he hasn't stepped forward as a witness in court lately. Since he saw that young woman dissolve, he was at least at Hi, the Angel. crime scene. But he never gave testimony or any information regarding people dissolving in the primordial seawater. Could he have been threatened? <laughs> if he's still alive, we should try searching for him. Yes, thank you. This is very important information indeed. We will continue to investigate. Oh, you mean you'll help us investigate? Well, you did say that our farewell meal didn't really count. That means we're still partners, right? And besides, we're in this now whether we like it or not. You're not gonna let those people who targeted us get off the hook so easily, are you, Traveler? Messing with us will cost them. Demoiselle, do try not to look quite so pleased. You are the face of... <coughs> you talk too much. <laughs> well, in that case, let's head back to one of our bases, shall we? I'll arrange accommodations for you. We also have some plans to go over, and hopefully we can deepen our bonds as partners. But we'll take that one step at a time, I guess. No, Don't Jonah. Worry, you two. With us around, our base is definitely Wait. secure. Yes? Was that Rue's quest? No, I didn't do Rue's quest. Genshin fandom is toxic, not gonna lie. Mm, I think all fandoms are toxic. Genshin's is no different. <clears throat> I think Genshin skews younger, which maybe there's a tendency there to be a little bit more of a trollic. But Final Fantasy's fan fandom was awful during uh, the release, up to the release of Final Fantasy 16. I saw no difference between that fandom and this fandom. Final Fantasy XIV's community is absolutely toxic. You just have to look for it. It's a little less in your face. All communities are toxic when they are allowed to be. Mm. 
Destiny's community right now, unbelievably toxic. Toxic to the devs, namely. Well, they've also lost trust in the devs, so I could see it, but like, unnecessary and unwarranted. Take it easy. I think Genshin is just enormous. Yeah, someone said Genshin is huge. Genshin is truly gigantic. I look at it this way too, is that like, so a lot of my videos, since I cover many things that aren't just Genshin, uh, do okay. But like whenever Genshin shows up, Genshin Arknights, any, really any gacha game, the fandom is incredibly loyal. Busiku. <laughs> That's a funny name. Busiku. Um, you read somewhere that the average Genshin player is above 30? It's right up ahead, but let's make sure we weren't followed first. I've been keeping watch, Demoiselle. I haven't spotted anyone suspicious thus that, far. That would be a surprise to me. Huh, very good, but let's not let our guard down for now. I shall find rooms for our respected guests. Thank you, Malus. Now, let's continue, Traveler. I mean, my average demographic is 19 to 25, and then 25 to 30 is the other one. I don't know that I'll finish it, but I'm certainly starting it. Um, I have another stream at three and I also need to eat and take Luna out and Whoa. new music. <laughs> Interesting ecosystem. That's cool. Oh, music change. Well, these are the slums, huh? Whoa. Very mysterious. Your accommodations have been arranged. Under the present circumstances, I can confidently say it's the best we have. Thank you. <laughs> well, our funds have been a little tight lately. After all, we don't allow illegal or unethical profiteering. In fact, our funds often come from citizenry who support us. Seems like it's tough times for everyone. But if you have the support of the people, that does sound like it's worth it. <sighs> To be honest, our financial situation was a lot better back when my father was in charge a few years ago. <sighs> I'm afraid I'm not quite his equal. Your father? He was the previous boss of Spina di Rosula, right? How did he... Uh, Demoiselle, if you'll allow me to explain. Uh, no, I I'll explain it myself. I suppose I couldn't run from this topic forever. And as partners... This is something I hope they can understand. My father's name is Callus. Yes, the same one they call Callus the Unfaithful in the street. Three years ago, he was accused of murdering his own friend. But he chose a duel to defend his honor instead of standing trial. He died in the duel. Slow ring. Fontaine. Oh no. Sad piano, always. But I do not believe my father was a murderer. I'm sure he was set up. At the time, I believed that if he only stood trial and was duly investigated, something amiss would crop up and prove his innocence. But strangely, he not only requested the duel himself, but rumor has it that even after being seriously injured to the point where he could be deemed as having lost the duel, he refused to surrender, determined to die in the arena. <laughs> Three years later, I still don't understand why he did that. How could he protect his honor if he's dead? 
If anything, he gave up his chance to defend himself. Do you have any clues as to why? The closest piece of info I have is that my father had been investigating the serial disappearances case at the time of his death. Ah, so that's why you're so determined to get to the bottom of that case. That's right. I've also tried to investigate the murder my father was implicated in. But I haven't found a single new clue in my countless reviews of the investigation records. However, I believe that if the murder case is related to those behind the disappearances, they must know something. I must know what really happened. Was my father coerced? Framed? Even if he really did kill his friend, I must get to the truth. <sighs> if only he'd been more open with me when he was still alive. He even hid the fact that my mother died due to complications when giving birth to me. Damn. And now, here I am investigating his death. <laughs> you really are a handful, aren't you, Papa? Seeking the truth for the sake of your family. You know, we're quite alike in this regard. Demoiselle, please. If there are I also will never believe that Master Callus murdered anyone. There are none whom I respect more than the two of you, Demoiselle. Master Callus did so much good in life, yet... All it took was one murder case for him to be dubbed Callus the Unfaithful. Even our supporters decreased greatly due to that incident, hence our uh, strained finances at present. Wait, if Callus was such a good man, wouldn't people at least be a little suspicious when he was accused? Uh, no. Perhaps people just revel in that kind of drama. It's not something exclusive to people from Fontaine, really. Everyone's like that. People love watching the evil turn over a new leaf, but they also enjoy watching good people fall into an abyss from one slip-up just as much. But how could... Ugh, never mind. If Callus was really falsely accused, we have to find the truth. He didn't deserve to have that happen to him. And there is one other thing. Master Callus's opponent in the duel... Oh, Ms. Corand. Oh. Shit. Her? Well, then, isn't that as good as saying that she was the one who killed him? No wonder the mood was a little strange between the two of you. Yeah, that's not the sort of thing that you can just let go and move on from. Ms. Corand has always placed great emphasis on the honorable nature of the duel. If her opponent doesn't yield, she will not stop either. She knew Master Callus beforehand and greatly respected him, but seeing how he was resolute in the arena... It has less of a... only ever one choice she could have made. There, there's less of an anime sound, too, which may, I think makes it more grounded. Uh, like, I think... Uh, Linny has a very anime sound. Lin or, um, Farina has a pretty... Well, no, I don't think it's anime sound, but I think Amber, it's an over-exaggerated sound, which is appropriate. It's an over-exaggerated emphasis. New, new, uh, Ray, Ray Chase definitely has a the heightened, the heightened anime thing a bit, but it works because of the consonants and the way that it's produced. There's a height to it. Yes, indeed, I understand that today we will be in order. Order, I said order. There's a, there's a heightened quality to it. It almost sounds transatlantic, but um. There's less, even this guy. This guy doesn't sound like he's in an anime. There was only one of a choice she could have made, so. It's not that I don't understand her at all, but I, I just can't deal with I this really, yet. I really, I don't think it is, no. Don't worry, Navia. Hyman knows how you feel. You don't have to force yourself to do that. Afterward, Ms. Coran told us that at the start of the duel, Master Callus requested that she ensure Demoiselle Navia's safety. Yes, that is our understanding as well. <sighs> oh, Papa. What madness drove you to ask the person who killed you to take care of me? All right, anyway. That's the information I wanted to share with you. Even if it did sound like I was just complaining towards the end. No, it's all right. Uh, thanks. You- Yeah! I want to eat. Please, relax and get some sleep. We will ensure you rest soundly. Clarinet. 
that jazz. Interesting. I'm on slips, huh? Navia? Trombone. Where did you go? I sent them back to Poisson. It's Spina de Rosula's place of origin, and where we have our headquarters. Poisson. There's not much for them to do here at the moment. Paimon kind of gets the feeling that you're just trying to get them off your back. But never mind that. When did you get back? Were you waiting here the whole time? No, I just returned after going out for a while. I did some investigating yesterday regarding the name Vache. I'd call myself a dolphin, I guess. Wait, so you didn't sleep at all? <laughs> How could I after having such critical new evidence appear? Uh, guess Paima wasn't speaking for everyone just now, huh? Uh, unfortunately, this name seems to have been wiped from existence. It doesn't seem to have a match anywhere. I suspect that those behind this have already taken steps to hinder an investigation from this angle. But that does prove that this Vache person is a key witness in the incident. Does that mean we're too late, though? I don't think C6ing one character would count as a whale by any stretch of the imagination. No. There is one ray of hope. One place in Fontaine that they would find almost impossible to threaten, no matter how much they wanted to. And that is the archives kept by Chief Justice Nouvellet, a place where detailed files on all the cases in recent years are kept. If the Oceanet you met is one of the young women who went missing recently, we should be able to find some related information there. So Nouvellet maintains an archive of case files? Whew. Guess that's the hard-working Chief Justice for you. In that case, let's go talk to him, shall Yeah, Poisson we? means fish, by the way. Um, hmm? Aren't you coming along, Navia? Did you get tired? Kind of playful. Uh, no, it's nothing. Let's go see the Honorable Chief Justice. Palais is right up ahead. Come on. Harpsichord. Baroque, Baroque, Baroque. Oh. oh please state your business here. The Chief Justice is presently is this a fugue? with official matters. It's a fugue. Cool. Huh. This place does look pretty heavily guarded. Guess that proves that Nervalet's files are really secure. Hey, don't you recognize us? Huh? Who are you? Just to be clear, <clears throat> I don't care who you are or who you might be related to. A fugue. Our rules make no exceptions. A fugue. Fugues are, uh, you start with one voice, then the other voice comes in a couple measures later, then another voice comes in a couple measure, measures after that voice comes in, and then they dance around each other. See? They've got great discipline, too. It's a musical style that was popular you in the Baroque time period. Even can tell. If you're here just to crack jokes, I can point you towards the exit. Unlike some, we're busy. So please leave if you don't have a reason to be here. Uh, no, no. What I meant to say is, shouldn't you remember us from a few days ago? We were at the trial of the great magician Linny. Oh, oh, yes, I remember. I read about it in the Steambird. You, you must be Linny's attorneys. It's all coming back to me now. We're here today to report and archive some information on a follow-up case. Huh. Is that even a thing? Hmm. Of course. Don't worry. We're here on official business. You can trust us. Well, all right then, I'll let you through. The Chief Justice is just inside. Ah, oh, thanks so much.
Please come in. Yeah. Fugue makes sense for this office. It's all right. Please let me know how I may be of assistance to you. Uh, so you're not mad at us? We are looking for a man called Vache. He may have been an eyewitness in the serial disappearances case. If we can find him, we may be able to unearth some key information on the case. Ah, I see. In that case, please wait here a moment while I browse through the files. Nervalette would be so easy to talk to. Unfortunately, I'm quite certain that no one by the name of Vache has been involved in any case, criminal or civil, in the past several years. There are no records of him either in the files or in my memory. Guess that's that. Traveler, what if it was really just a dream? Is that so? All right then. Thank you so much, Monsieur Neuvillette. We'll take our leave now. Ahem. Miss Navia, I can understand how you feel. Your father, Callus, was a truly exceptional man. We deeply regret his passing. Hmm. And what? Are you trying to say, Monsieur Neuvillette? Are you trying to console me? Extend your sympathy? Or just express some tendril of regret? No. You are not trying to do any of that. I can hear it in your voice. There's no emotion behind your words. You only said those things because you felt like you should. It's just like last time. After my father took his place in the duelist ring, I pushed through the guards to talk to you as a last resort. You even told me then that you thought there was something fishy with the case, yet you still allowed the duel to go ahead. In your eyes, the value of a human life is nothing compared to those cold laws you hold so dear. If you truly regret my father's death, then why didn't you call a stop to the duel? Why didn't you give me the power to stop him from throwing his life away? Why did you just let him die? Despised and hated by all, everything was hanging on a thread at that moment. Just the tiniest effort could have changed everything. There are still so many things I never got to tell him. So many questions he still owes me answers to. If you really have no heart, then just look me in the eyes. I, Navia, will show you the true meaning of regret. I'm sorry, Miss Navia. You and my father are truly alike. You keep all kinds of things in your heart and never say a word to anyone. It's not so much that you can't feel, but that you would never express anything. Oh well. In any case, everyone already knows full well the apathy of the Chief Justice. My apologies for taking my emotions out on you, Monsieur Chief Justice. Let's go, Traveler and Paimon. Navia, are you- I'm fine. Uh, rain. It's raining. You're right. Wasn't it still sunny when we went into the building? And there shouldn't be any active trials today. How strange. Now that I think of it, on the day my father was convicted of murder, it was also raining. What is it? Did you think of something? Yeah, he was outside. It was uncovered and the rain could fall there. Why? Do you think the rain could have affected the crime scene? That thought has occurred to us before. We've even expanded the search area to try to account for that. But didn't find anything of value. Oh? Wait. Uh, you don't mean... So you're saying that the true murderer could have been turned into water? 
and then got washed away with the rain? Yeah. And if that's what had happened, then no one would have believed your dad, even if he explained what he saw to the authorities. I really think I found a true genius for a partner. <laughs> You're completely right. How did I not connect the dots earlier? All right, let's go to Poisson. With this new lead in mind, we'll get to the bottom of my father's case for sure. Yeah, we're gonna make progress for sure this time. Do you want to go with me now? Or do you want to head over by yourself? Great, let's go then. Knows me. <laughs> Time to go. Cool. Boom, chunk, another. <clears throat> boom, bang, chunk, boom, bang, chunk, boom, chunk, chunk, boom, chunk, chunk, boom, chunk, chunk, boom, chunk, chunk. Whoa! Chunk. What a huge ship! Why would a ship be anchored at a place like this? <laughs> There's no need to be so surprised. While it may look like a ship, it's actually Spina di Rosula's headquarters. My father was the one who asked for it to be built like this. Perhaps our taste in exterior design is the only thing we occasionally had in common. A gigantic and glamorous ship embodies discovery, opportunity, ambition, and conquest. It symbolizes Spina di Rosula's bright and limitless future. Everything I'm starting to get why you like it. And Paimon thought you were bluffing when you said Spina di Rosula had a glorious past. Paimon was confused why a group with such a history would live in the sewers. <clears throat> hey, Yakuru, loving, 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 uh, all things, all things related to Fontaine. Music is actually, uh, very peaceful. Is where Spina di Rosula began, after all. Not all the tracks are, like, stand out that need to be discussed, but there's a lot to like here. But that's with any, with anything, there's always standout tracks that are worth really exploring. I follow the wind. Whoa. This feels, this feels like uh, an Italian ballad, actually. It's the mandolin that does it for me. Boom, dun, dun, boom, dun, dun. <laughs> when you get this, like. I'm just saying, if you play with fire, you're gonna get burned. If you play with fire, you're gonna get burned. It's true. There are some Italian references, yeah. There are some Italian names. Take it easy. Malus, we're back. A 
apologies for the wait, demoiselle, and our most important partner. You said before that you still had some business at the court. What brings you back to Poisson so quickly? Uh, about that. It's because my partner here reminded me of something really important. You see, what if my father's case had something to do with water from the primordial sea? You still remember, right, Belus? On that night, it was raining? Yes, the case was quite similar to that of Mr. Linney's. Both were what you'd call impossible murders. Could you tell us a bit more about what happened before? Yeah, of course. Many years ago, something called synth began to gain popularity in Poisson. At a glance, it was a kind of drink that could excite your mood and produce many pleasant hallucinations. Wait! Didn't that guard guy who turned into water also mention that the primordial water could be used to produce some kind of potion? Yes, he did. Considering what we know now, it's almost certain that Synth is created using water from the Primordial Sea. If you drink Synth for an extended amount of time, you'll suffer many side effects, such as losing the ability to focus or control your emotions. And if you were to stop drinking it completely, you'll experience flashes of paranoia and anxiety while lacking energy to do anything. It's an extremely dangerous substance. As he oversaw Poisson, my father was compelled to put a stop to Synth abuse and called for a complete ban of it. Boss's uncompromising attitude incurred the synth vendor's wrath, but no matter how much they threatened or bribed him, he refused to yield. Not only that, Boss became determined to find the mastermind behind the synth operation and put an end to the problem once and for all. Yes, but the enemy was very cunning. <laughs> so he could never get anything out of the dealers all of whom only sold the stuff and weren't privy to the rest of the operation. Recognizing that, my father decided to contact the dealers in secret and cultivate personal relationships with them. The man's name was Jacques. He felt greatly ashamed about his work after seeing many families destroyed by synth abuse. That night, my father hosted a banquet at his countryside estate. He planned to meet up and exchange information with Jacques over some food. But then, we heard two gunshots from the courtyard. We raced to the scene and found my father, still holding a gun, and Jacques, who was already dead on the ground. Huh? How did that happen? Aren't they on the same side? Sounds just like Lenny's case, doesn't it? In both cases, the culprit seemed obvious, but neither appeared to have any motive at all. Looking back on it, though, I now believe the most important clue was something we all overlooked at the time. There were pieces of clothing left at the scene. Precisely. It's all thanks to you that I made the connection now. Back then, we all just thought they were some costumes that Jacques used to disguise himself at the banquet. But, considering it now, it's almost certain that they belong to a third person at the scene. With one extra person, we'll also need to reconsider why the two shots were fired. You're right. We still don't know what happened. But my intuition tells me that we're on the right track to figuring it all out. I'm finally headed towards the truth. Jacques was an empathetic man who was infinitely remorseful for his past actions. It's unlikely that he turned on boss with zero warning. I think this third person is probably the key to the full truth. On that note, however, even though this will not please you, demoiselle, as you're and your father's butler, I must still offer a word of warning. Our opponent is insidious and cruel. They are extremely difficult to deal with, and Boss has already lost his life trying to bring them to justice. Even though Spina de Rosula has lost most of its former glory, Poisson has welcomed a new time of peace. There is no need to follow your father's path. It would be both wise and in line with Boss's wishes to step back and give up on the case. If that's indeed what he wished for, then he should have told me that himself. Was I not the closest person to him? And yet, I was the one most kept in the dark. What was the point of him dying without sharing any of the secrets he knew? Did he manage to protect anything in the end? Synth is still here. Callus the Unfaithful is still his epithet. And Spina di Rosula is barely getting by. Nothing has changed. Did he think I'd just accept his meaningless death? 
and live out my life just as meaninglessly? I've never accepted that, ever. Not since that day, and certainly not now. I want to find out the real answer for everyone's sake. For the missing girls, for the victims, and for myself. Navia. This is indeed the best moment to act. Your partner appears to be quite reliable, and more importantly, Demoiselle, I think you're also ready to take this off. So you do know something else, Malus. Yes, I do. In fact, even before that banquet, Boss already knew of the connection between Synth and the serial disappearances case. But what drove all the tensions to the boiling point was the revelation that you, oh. Demoiselle, <clears throat> had been selected as Damn. the next target to disappear. What? Boss also didn't tell you that he mm. had been diagnosed with a rare illness. The doctors told him that he had no more than five years left to live. And the serial disappearances case caused him great anxiety. Five years was nowhere near enough time to resolve this long-standing conflict. But once he passed Sounds away, like all the danger would pass on to right, you. Like a... Knowing Shut all of this, he decided to use one final intimidation tactic before his death. He claimed to have already gotten his hands on some key incriminating evidence for the other side, and even told some members of Spina di Rosula about the details. But as long as you remain safe, he would not share the evidence with the public. If something were to happen to you, then he and all those he told would immediately expose all they knew about Synth and the disappeared victims. Right. So nobody would be able to get off scot-free. As we've seen, Boss's tactic has worked. Even though Boss has been gone for a long time, the other side has not tried to take Demoiselle's life. No. I don't believe it. He never appeared to look sick to me. No father wants their daughter to see them weak and haggard. Especially someone as proud as Boss. To him, dying in a duel and suffering lasting dishonor as the unfaithful was still far preferable than losing face in front of his daughter. Uh, so he chose to die in silence so that he could protect me. I'm afraid you're not understanding this correctly, Demoiselle. What bo if Boss's spirit could hear you telling me that you want to find the answer for the sake of everyone involved. I'm sure he'd be extremely proud. Uh, that fool. <laughs> Couldn't he have just given it to me straight? No. He might have set up everything precisely because he never thought I'd be able to understand him. Is that the amount of confidence he had in me? And what if I was never able to make it to where I am now? Yeah. I suppose that's true. With the way he'd set things up, if I had wanted, I could have just lived out my life without a care in the world. But thankfully, he rarely talked to me about complex matters, and thus understood little of me as a person. <laughs> in this case, he really didn't need to give me an easy way out. <laughs> huh. Malus, what was the key evidence that he shared with you? It's the location where Synth is produced. Essentially, it's the enemy's headquarters. When he was threatening the enemy, Boss didn't share the specifics of the incriminating evidence he found. But if you want to use it against the enemy, you'll still have to take several things into consideration. Why? If we know where the place is, can't we just go storming in? You mustn't forget that we're fighting against a mysterious and dangerous organization the that's been in operation for decades. There's no telling what might be lying in wait at their headquarters. We also have no idea what kind of evidence we may be able to find inside, nor what people we may be able to capture. But a single visit to their headquarters would be tantamount to a formal declaration of war. The worst case would be that we leave empty-handed, but also open ourselves up to full retaliation. Then, in that case, why not work with the Fontaine authorities? Well, you saw one of them dissolve during Mr. Linney's case. We have no idea just how thoroughly they may have been infiltrated. Huh. That's true. Seems my father really had no choice. But things are different now. 
It should be a lot easier to prove the other side's guilt, now that we've connected Synth with the disappearances case. You sound like you've put a lot of thought into this, Maloose. I am the butler, after all. I live but <laughs> to serve the boss and Demoiselle's will. I've always been willing to take on any kind of risk for your sake. But considering my relative lack of ability, I've spent my time keeping secrets, mm. performing basic investigations, and mm. waiting for the right time to come. Thank you for all of that, Maloose. Uh, have you discovered anything new in the past few years? Let me think. One conclusion I came to is that the enemy must be quite familiar with Spina de Rosula, or at least have an informant planted here. When I announced orders to the organization's members on Demoiselle's behalf, I used to deliberately keep a few people in the dark and observe the reactions of the synth vendors. If the vendors didn't change their plans, then the individuals informed of our orders must be innocent. Malus is one of the most interesting fled, NPCs however, so far in Genshin. Must have given them the news. Besides Dvorak, of course. After several rounds of testing and investigative I'm tracing, I'm joking. I've narrowed the suspect list down to three people. Really? The first is Florent, Spina de Rosula's senior advisor. Looks like huh? Me. Florent? Yes, surprising, isn't it? He was one of the people Boss trusted the most, which also means that he was someone who understood Boss really well. Thanks to his position within Boss's innermost circle, he always knew our upcoming plans and could thus avoid capture this whole time. There's someone else like him too. Marcel, the head of Confrérie of Cabriere. Uncle Marcel. What is this Confrérie? Confrérie? Conf it's a guild in Poisson. The boss helped it to grow to its current size and prominence. In the beginning, they were only reselling some daily goods, but now they're I don't think one of the richest no. guilds around with a lot D of business connections in the Dvorak city. Dvorak will not be playable. So, I don't think they're so. like a sister organization of Spina di Rosula? Yes, you can say that. When we were fighting against the synth dealers, they provided us with plenty of support. It's... A bit difficult to imagine someone using their own money to hunt down themselves. The final suspect is Thierry, the man responsible for coordinating information between Spina di Rosula and the guards. Although the guards mostly leave us to our own devices, there are still many activities we have to report to the local authorities. <clears throat> Since Thierry is always in the know about our current activities, he could theoretically always plan one step ahead. I see. These are all people who I communicate with quite regularly. To think that the enemy we've been fighting against has been right next to me all along, among those I trust the most. It's almost too hard to believe. If you want to investigate them, please take every precaution to not alert the quarry. Judging from our experience, the enemy is extremely cautious. Mm, of course. And thank you, Malus. You've provided us with a lot of great information. You're too kind, my lady. I'm just doing my duty. Also, Dvorak doesn't and have a vision. Before I forget, uh, proving Boss's innocence would also mean clearing him of blame in Jacques' death. After that incident, Jacques' wife and daughter were taken into the Spina's care. They still live in Poisson today. If it might help, you could also pay them a visit. I can make the necessary arrangements. I don't know how people get. I don't know how people get visions. I, I really don't think. A new case explain. awaits, my dear partner. I hope we can work together to uncover the truth and end this case once and for all. I mean, don't get me wrong. <clears throat> I certainly wouldn't complain. We did get, you know, we did get Yoon Jin. Just depends. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I haven't heard anything. And I would have a hard time keeping that quiet. Which, I, I would keep it quiet, but in the case of this, I, I honestly don't know. Hit. <laughs> I 
I will never stream Aranara. I don't have the time. It is settled then. Please excuse me and enjoy your conversation at your leisure. Thank you for arranging everything for us, Malus. Excuse me, miss. Do you need anything from us? Mm. Oh. Hey, Navia's all quiet. This isn't like her at all. I'm sorry that I only came to visit after all this time. After what happened, I didn't know how I was supposed to face the two of you. Ah, if it's about that, there's no need to apologize. After my husband died, Spina di Rasula sent us a lot of Mora and support. I understood your guilt and apology to be genuine. But aren't all of those things nothing compared to the loss of Jacques? <sighs> I can understand the kind of pain that comes with losing a father so needlessly. You don't understand at all. I didn't know how to face you. Because I didn't know what I could possibly bring as a consolation gift. I know only the full truth could bring closure to you. And to all of us. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I appreciate the sentiment, but you don't have to carry all that guilt. On the matter regarding my husband, my daughter and I have more or less found our answer already. Would you mind sharing it with me? I really can't believe that my father could ever bring himself to shoot Jacques. I always knew that my husband's money was earned through others' suffering. He told me countless times that if he could turn back the clock, he would never go into the synth business again. He had many regrets, and felt that he took the idea of providing for his family too literally. For the longest time, he thought Mora was everything. So when Mr. Callus came to him with a proposal, he accepted it almost immediately. He tried to be as careful as he could, but even so, he was still found out by the higher-ups. They found out about his betrayal? Papa didn't say that exactly, but Papa did tell me that I should never be ungrateful. Before he left that day, he told me that he had no choice. It was only later that I realized it was his final farewell to the two. I don't know that for sure, but you could say that's the conclusion I eventually came to. Which is why I'm the one who should feel guilty. Oh. Alice had always taken great care of us, both when he was still alive and after he passed away. Even if he fired the shot that killed my husband, it was likely in self-defense. Hmm. It is impossible for me to hate him for what he had done. But Mama, why is Papa still the bad guy if he did the right thing? Papa always wanted to be a good man, so why did he have to do a bad thing in the end? Well, things aren't always as they seem. You still feel like your Papa was a good man, right? Yeah, Papa was a really good man. The best in the whole world. Then you should hold on to that. If a good man had to do a bad thing, then he must have had his reasons. Regardless of whether he left you a parasol or a sword, he must have done so to give you a better life. Oh. Thank you for everything you've told me. I will definitely find the truth. The current state of things is not something I'm willing to just sit back and accept. Thank you. I'm very grateful to hear this from you. Even though your personality is quite different from your father's, your determination when you speak is really similar. You really think so? That's the first time anyone said that to me. Are you okay, Navia? Uh, I'm fine. Don't worry. Let's investigate the three suspects next. Florence should be nearby, and we should be able to find Thierry and Uncle Marcel in the city. Oh my god, I got stuck. I'll get myself together oh, on the way. I clipped. So please don't worry. I clipped. Ooh. Time to go.
Marco, do you plan to finish the rest of this question on the stream? Will you say that? Um, good question. I assume, I would assume there's at least another, what, hour? Two hours? Probably, probably an hour? I'd say an hour and a half at least, right? The wind knows me. If I finish this quest, then what will we do? What will we do in, in the Genshin Impact? Because I'm not going back. We'll have to explore. We'll have to... Uh, what happens when I finish the Archon story? I'm not going to do Aranara. Ever. So... What do we do? We'll do all the side quests, of course. Fontaine is going to be the place that I do a lot of work in, I think. No, I'm, I'm no, I'm not doing R and R. Not ever. Damn. Ugh, so peaceful. I love it. And Yunus is probably my favorite area. God, so pretty. That's shaped like the Matterhorn. I know people are saying that Dragon Spine is supposed to be modeled after, which makes sense, but like that looks like the Matterhorn. Who said I'm Russian? No one. Leaves. Adorn my knight. No one's rushing Genshin. I am taking my time. Is a spoiler? Is it a spoiler if I don't know it? So if you say something like "This isn't a spoiler," here's something a fact you didn't know. I think that's a spoiler. Isn't it? Just a thought on that. Wherever in this world I just I don't come, have the time to commit to that R and R quest. Of my home. This blade. Is it dialogue from the Aquabus? It is the last link I have to the okay. land of my birth. Do, 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 do. Sorry, I'm not trying to be a, a dick. It's just that I get spoiled a lot in this game. I don't know why. Genshin in particular, just like constant. <clears throat> so I'm like overprotective about spoilers. It's my bad if it's not a spoiler, but. I could do like these, I guess. Okay, I gotta go. Around, and I know just the tune to accompany them. I will talk to if all of you later. Um, when will I finish this? Tomorrow afternoon? Question mark? Or Monday? 
I may finish it tonight. I may do I may do a third stream if I'm feeling up to it. After this, in about an hour, I'm going to be playing the Outer Wilds for a little while. Finishing that, I think, today if I can. Uh, tomorrow I start Chrono Trigger, which is a priority. Um, yeah, we'll be around. We'll do more Genshin. I'll uh, I'll keep you... I, I'm not rushing. I'm, I'm having a good time. What What is there to rush? Uh, we'll talk to all of you later. Thanks a ton, and we'll see you soon. Bye!